Hello, second graders. I'm back with another chapter of Little House in the Big Woods. We are up to chapter six, and this one is called Two Big Bears. Then one day, Pa said spring was coming. In the big woods, the snow was beginning to thaw. Bits of it dropped from the branches of the trees and made little holes in the softening snowbank below. At noon, all the big icicles along the eaves of the little house quivered and sparkled in the sunshine, and drops of water hung trembling at their tips. Pa said he must go to town to trade the furs of the wild animals that he had been trapping all winter. So one evening, he made a big bundle of them. And there were so many furs that when they were packed together tightly and tied, they had made a bundle almost as big as Pa. Very early one morning, Pa strapped the bundle of furs on his shoulder and started to walk to town. There were so many furs to carry that he could not carry his gun. Ma was worried, but Pa said that by starting before sunup and walking very fast all day, he could get home before dark. The nearest town was far away. Laura and Mary had never even seen the town. They had never seen a store. They had never seen even two houses standing together. But they knew that in the town there were many houses and that there was a store full of candy and calico and other wonderful things like powder and salt and sugar. They knew that Pa would trade his furs to the storekeeper for beautiful things from the town and all day they were expecting the presents he would bring them. When the sun sank low above the treetops and no more drops fell from the tips of the icicles, they began to watch eagerly for Pa. The sun sank out of sight, the woods grew dark, and he did not come. Ma started supper and set the table, and still he did not come. It was time to do the chores, and still he did not come. Ma said that Laura must come with her while she milked the cow. Laura could carry the lantern. So Laura put on her coat and Bob buttoned it up. And Laura put her hands into her red mittens that hung by a red yarn string around her neck while Ma lighted the candle in the lantern. Laura was proud to be helping Ma with the milking and she carried the lantern very carefully. Its sides were made of tin and they had places cut in them for the candlelight to shine through. When Laura walked behind Ma on the path to the barn, the little bits of candlelight from the lantern leaped all around her on the snow. It was not quite dark yet. The woods were dark, but there was a gray light on the snowy path, and in the sky there were a few faint stars. The stars did not look as warm and bright as the little bits of light that came from the lantern. Laura was surprised to see the dark shape of Suki, the brown cow, standing at the barnyard gate. Ma was surprised Suki was out too. It was too early in the spring for Suki to be let out in the big woods to eat grass. She lived in the barn, but sometimes on warm days, Pa left the door of her stall open so she could come into the barnyard. Now Ma and Laura saw her behind the bars waiting for them. Ma went up to the gate and pushed it against to open, but it would not open very far because there was Suki standing against the gate. So Ma said, Suki, get over! And she reached across the gate and slapped Suki on the shoulder. Just then, one of the dancing little bits of light from the lantern jumped between the bars of the gates. And, and, and through the light, Laura saw long, shaggy, black fur and two little glittering eyes. Suki had short brown fur. Suki had large, gentle eyes. Ma said, Laura walk back to the house. So Laura turned around and began to walk toward the house and Ma came behind her. And when they had gone part way, Ma snatched Laura up, lantern and all, and ran. Ma ran with her into the house and slammed the door. Then Laura said, Ma, was that a bear? Yes, Laura, said Ma, it was a bear. Laura began to cry. She hung on to Ma and cried and cried and said, oh, it was a bear. Is he going to eat Suki? No, Ma said, hugging her. Suki is safe in the barn. 
Just think, Laura, all those big heavy logs that make up the barn wall and think of the door. It's heavy and solid. It's made to keep bears out. No, no, the bear cannot get in and eat Suki. So Laura felt better, but then she said, but Ma, he could have hurt us, couldn't he have? He didn't hurt us though, Ma said. You were a good girl, Laura, to do exactly as I told you, and you did it quickly without even asking why. Ma was trembling, but then she began to laugh. And then she said, ho, ho, to think I slapped a bear. Wow. Okay, I'm going to show you a picture of this. So here they are. They think it's their cow, and Ma reaches over and slaps it, and it's actually a bear. And there's Laura with the lantern. Oof. Okay. Then Ma put supper on the table for Laura and Mary. Pa had still not come home yet. He didn't come as Laura and Mary got undressed and when they said their prayers and when they snuggled into the trundle bed. Ma sat by the lamp mending one of Pa's shirts. The house seemed cold and still and strange without Pa. Laura listened to the wind in the big woods. All around the house, the wind went crying as though it were lost in the dark and in the cold. The wind sounded frightened. Ma finished mending the shirt. Laura saw her fold it slowly and carefully. Ma smoothed it with her hand. Then she did a thing she had never done before. She went to the door and pulled the leather latch string through its hole in the door so that nobody could get in from the outside unless she lifted the latch. She came and took Carrie, all limp and sleeping, out of the big bed. She saw that Laura and Mary were still awake, and she said to them, Go to sleep, girls. Everything is all right. Pa will be here in the morning. Then she went back to her rocking chair, and she sat there rocking gently and holding baby Carrie in her arms as she rocked. She was still sitting up late, waiting for Pa, and Laura and Mary meant to stay awake too until he came, but they fell asleep. In the morning, Pa was there. He had brought candy for Laura and Mary and two pieces of pretty calico to make them each a new dress. Ma's was of china blue pattern on white ground and Laura's was dark red with little golden brown dots on it. Ma, oh sorry, Mary's was the china blue pattern and Ma had calico for a new dress too. It was brown with a big feathery white pattern all over it. They were all happy because Pa had got such good prices for his furs that he could afford to get them such beautiful presents. The tracks of the big bear were all around the barn and there were marks of his claws on the walls. But Suki and the horses were safe inside. All that day, the sun shone, the snow melted and the little streams of water ran from the icicles, which all the time grew thinner and thinner. Before the sun set that night, the bear tracks were only shapeless marks in the wet, soft snow. After supper, Pa took Laura and Mary on his knee, and he said he had a new story to tell them. This is called The Story of Pa and the Bear in the Way. And here's a picture of Pa walking a town carrying all the furs. When I went to town yesterday with the furs, I found it hard walking in the soft snow. It took me a long time to get to town, and other men with furs had come in earlier to do their trading. The storekeeper was busy, and I had to wait until he could look at my furs. Then we had to bargain about the price of each one, and then I had to pick out the things I wanted to trade for. So it was nearly sundown before I could even start for home. I tried to hurry, but the walking was hard and I was tired, so I had not gone far before the night came, and there I was, alone in the big woods without my gun. There were still six miles to walk, and I came along as fast as I could. 
The night grew darker and darker and I wished for my gun because I knew that some of the bears had come out of their winter dens already. I had seen their tracks when I went into town in the morning. Now bears are hungry and cross at this time of year. You know they've been sleeping in their dens all winter long with nothing to eat and that makes them thin and angry when they wake up. I did not want to meet a bear. I hurried along as quick as I could in the dark. By and by, the stars gave a little light. It was still black as pitch where the woods were thick, but in the open places, I could see dimly. I could see the snowy road ahead a little way, and I could see the dark woods standing all around me. I was glad when I came to an open space where the stars gave me faint light. All this time, I was watching as well as I could for bears. I was listening for the sound they might make when they come carelessly through the bushes. Then I came into an open space and there, right in the middle of the road, I saw a big black bear. He was standing up on his hind legs, looking at me. I could see his eyes shine. I could see his pig snout nose. I could even see one of his claws in the starlight. My scalp prickled and the hair stood up on the ends. I stopped in my tracks and stood stock still. The bear did not move. There he stood, staring at me. I knew it would do no good to try to get around him. I knew he would follow me into the dark woods where he could see better than I could. I did not want to fight a winter-starved bear in the dark. Oh, how I wished for my gun. I had to pass that bear in order to get home. I thought that if I could scare him, he might get out of the road and let me go by. So I took a deep breath and suddenly I shouted with all my might and ran at him, waving my arms. Ah! He didn't move. I did not run very far toward him, I tell you. I stopped and looked at him and he stood looking at me. Then I shouted again, ah, there he stood. I kept on shouting and waving my arms at that bear, but he did not budge. Well, it would do me no good to run away. There were other bears in the woods. I might meet one at any time. I met it, might as well deal with this one as well as any other. Besides, I was coming home to Ma and you girls. I would never get here if I ran from everything in the woods that scared me. So at last I looked around and I got a good, big, solid, heavy branch that had been broken from a tree by the weight of the snow. I lifted it up in my hands and I ran straight at that bear. I swung my club as hard as I could and brought it down, bang, right on its head. And there he stood, for he was nothing but a big, black, burnt out tree stump. I had passed that on my way to town that morning. It wasn't a bear at all. I only thought it was a bear because I had been thinking all the time about bears and I was so afraid of meeting one. It wasn't really a bear? Mary asked. No, Mary, it wasn't a bear at all. There I had been yelling and dancing and waving my arms all by myself in the big woods, trying to scare nothing but a tree stump. And here's a picture of Pa running up the tree stump. But you could see in the dark and in the woods how you might think that was a bear from farther away. And if there wasn't good lighting. And plus, he said he spooked himself so bad by worrying about bears all day. It's funny. Laura said, Ours really was a bear, but we were not scared because we thought it was Suki. Pa did not say anything, but he tugged her tighter. Ooh, Laura said, that bear might have eaten Ma and me all up, and she snuggled closer to Pa. But Ma right, walked right up to him and slapped him, and he didn't do anything at all. Why do you think he didn't do anything? I think he was too surprised to do anything, Laura, Pa said. I guess he was afraid when the lantern shone in his eyes, and when Ma walked up to him and slapped him, he knew she wasn't afraid. Well, you were brave too, Laura said. Even if it was only a tree stump, you thought it was a bear. You would have hit him on the head with a club. If it had been a bear, you would have hit him, wouldn't you, Pa? 
Yes, said Pa, I would have. You see, I had to. Then Ma said it was time. It was bedtime. She helped Laura and Mary undress and button up their red flannel nightgowns. They knelt down by their trundle bed and say, said their prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray to Lord my soul to take. Ma kissed them both and tucked the covers in around them. They lay there a while looking at Ma's smooth parted hair and her hands busy with sewing in the lamplight. Her needle made little clicking sounds against her thimble and the thread went softly swish through the pretty calico that Pa had traded the furs for. Laura looked at Pa, who was greasing his boots. His mustache and his hair and his long brown beard were silky in the lamplight and the colors of his plaid jacket looked gay. He whistled cheerfully while he worked. It was a warm night. The fire had gone to coals on the hearth and Pa did not build it back up again. All around the little house in the big woods, there were little sounds of falling snow and from the eaves, you could hear the drip, drip, drip of the melting icicles. It was just a little while and the trees would be putting out their baby leaves, all rosy and yellow and pale and green. And then there would be wildflowers and then there would be birds in the woods. Then there would be no more stories by the fire at night, but all day long, Laura and Mary would run and play among the trees for soon it would be spring. And that's the end of the chapter. That was a good one. Oh my goodness. They had so many scary interactions with animals. Um, kind of a funny story about Pa, but that's crazy that Ma and Laura got so close to a bear that Ma slapped it. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be reading the next chapter soon. Miss you all. Take care. Get warm and cozy, cozy in your own house. Bye.